critical right now? Well, sleep is foundational to our immunity and to our mental health. And yet, of course, sleep is harder to come by uh, when you are stressed. So um, the first micro step we suggest everybody follows is to pick a time at the end of the day when you stop consuming coronavirus news, you know, which is really a cutoff time. Uh, no more uh, coronavirus news, no more social media. This is the time um, to transition to sleep. The way you, know, you, you still have young children and you know how you create a transition for them. Um, you read them good night moon, you give them a bath, you put them in their PJs. So we need a transition for ourselves um, to put behind us, you know, the stressful world of the day. And so really like, being intentional, intentional about intentional. turning off. Exactly. You, know, you know, some people have said that now it's even harder to be able to turn off, right? The lines have been completely blurred between our workspace and our personal space. And because of that, often with people who, who are caring for family and young kids, they may not necessarily have the time during the day to be able to do their full work and they have to then jump on later in the evening. But you say turn your devices off and carve out time. That's essential. Absolutely. And in terms of work, Moira, what we recommend is to relentlessly prioritize. Like, what are the things that have to be done today at work? And then get comfortable with incompletions. There are things Which that is hard are for a lot to, of us. Yeah, you know, there are things that are not going to be done today, but they don't have to be done today. You know, all of us, especially those of us who are type A and perfectionists, um, we expect everything to be done and we feel that we can just forget about ourselves and we'll just keep going and power through and Moira the, the thing that I wrote about in my Sunday newsletter which makes me optimistic is that we have an opportunity now not just to come out of this period um, but to also come out of it stronger more resilient and with better habits, both in terms of how we work and how we live. Because if you think of it, and you and I have talked about it in the past, the way we're working and living was not sustainable. We were already on the path to burnout. And this was, was a crisis wake up call. So you believe that there could be a silver lining to this, if it forces us to be able to take that pause and be able to focus on those, those critical self care issues. I really believe so. Because right now, you know, we are all, um, faced with uh, the opportunity to put everything in perspective, right? When you are confronted with life and death, and, uh, and many have lost loved ones, have lost jobs, when we are faced with a kind of existential crisis, a lot of the things that tended to stress us or, or to lead to burnout don't seem as important. And that's a perspective we can carry with us. Um, into the time beyond the pandemic, because more I profoundly believe we're not going back. Uh, there is no such thing as going back to the world we knew. We need to reimagine and recreate a world that is better, more compassionate, and wiser than the one we're going to be leaving behind. So this moment in time is a chance for us to really positively evolve our, our, our culture to make sure that we're this 20, 24 seven, always on nonstop um, type of lifestyle that was so damaging, um, you know, begins to, to take on a new life and then we improve those things. I wanna talk a little bit more about some of the practices and the micro steps that you think are, are so critical that people can be implementing now. You talk about sleep, you talk about turning off devices, but one of the things also are these simple things like taking many pauses. You talk a lot about sort of 60 second breaks to catch your breath, that taking a walk isn't something that feels self-indulgent, but, but critical. When we say we can't carve out the time to practice the self-care, you say that we have the time. Well, not only do we have the time, but if we really believe in science, uh, that time is actually going to make us more productive. So this is not like a warm and fuzzy self-care rule. This is science-backed and this is data-driven. And all the science tells us that it takes between 60 and 90 seconds 
to course correct from stress. You know, we're not going to eliminate stress. So, so that, stress. but that quickly, 60 to 90 seconds, yes. we can have an immediate impact, which also obviously has a, a huge impact on our physical health. Exactly. And you, the, literally the cortisol hormone, which is a stress hormone, leaves our body. And so that allows us to prevent stress from becoming cumulative. And that's really the only thing we can avoid. And if stress does not become cumulative, it has a huge impact on our health. You know, hypertension and high blood pressure are huge chronic problems. Um, but it also makes it easier for us to unwind and be able to sleep and recharge. So it's so, critical to, to all of these things. Um, you know, we've been getting um, a lot of questions about devices. You mentioned earlier that you do need to carve out time to turn them off in the evenings. You've spoken a lot about the relationship to devices. And ironically, right now, it's all the more complicated because that's oftentimes our phones, our computers are oftentimes the only chance we have to connect with others, to be able to deal with also the isolation that can be so difficult. What are different ways or suggestions that you have have that we evolve our relationship with our devices when they've also taken on this new dimension? Absolutely. I think, Moira, we can accept the paradox that our devices at this moment in time are incredibly important. They are helping us connect with loved ones. You and I couldn't be doing what we're doing without um, our devices, although I would much rather be doing it in person. But we need to disconnect from them. We need to disconnect from them in order, first of all, to connect with ourselves, which is really the primary connection. That's really the heart of everything we're doing at Thrive Moira. It's based on a, um, a principle that every spiritual tradition, every philosophical tradition espouses, which is that every human being has this place of calm, strength, peace, and wisdom in us. So how can we help ourselves, especially in the middle of a, a pandemic, connect with that? I call it the eye of the hurricane. And I have a picture of the eye of the hurricane. We are in a metaphorical hurricane. Our resilience depends entirely on our ability to connect with that center in ourselves. And that's where the 60 seconds come in. In our behavior change up, we have a feature, which is my favorite feature, called Reset. And we ask users to put together all the things that are joy triggers for them, like pictures of their kids, their pets, their favorite quote, their favorite landscape, their favorite uh, piece of music. And then anytime they're feeling stressed, we ask them to play that. And it's kind of amazing how quickly, just by being reminded of the things that you love in your life, the things you're grateful for, you can touch that center in yourself and move beyond whatever the, had stressed you. So I think what you're saying, Ariane, is that, that we have to be a lot more intentional about our self-care. And it doesn't necessarily mean re-architecting our entire lives, but forming better habits. We've got a couple of questions from people who have asked about you know, the challenges of procrastinating, that these things that we know are good for us um, are often things that we put on the back burner. Do you have any advice around how to create better habits that stick, recognizing what may work for some person may not work for, for somebody else, but how do we create habits that last, especially in this moment in time? So Mara, what is interesting is that the first step to creating healthy habits is a, a, a mindset shift. Let me give you an example. We are working with the, the leadership of Accenture. And Ellen Which Schultz is a consulting is their, company, tech yes. company for, for those who don't know about it. And Ellen Shook is the head of, uh, the global head of HR. They have 500,000 people. And um, Ellen, during one of our uh, workshops, said that she doesn't feel she can give herself time to go for a walk because it's self-indulgent. You know, right now, as you know, the the head of HR in any company is really the most important executive right there next to the CEO. It used to be the CFO, now it's the CHRO. And so when she changed her mindset and realized that in fact, when she goes for a walk or when she takes a minute between Zoom calls to walk around her desk or recharge in some way, 
she'll be more effective. She'll be a better leader. She'll make better decisions. She started doing it and it's had a huge impact. And the other day she showed me how she's completing her circles and her, her walk every day. And so the first thing is this mindset shift because we are all living under this collective delusion that to be the best leader we can be or the best parent we can be, we need to be always on. We can't afford to take even a minute for ourselves. Once we change that mindset, then we can pick any micro steps that we want to start with. We have hundreds and people can go to thriveglobal.com and see hundreds of micro steps there. Um, whether it's around your physical health, which is sleep, um, and nutrition, exercise, or your mental health, which is how do you cultivate habits of gratitude? Everything is broken down to very, very tiny steps. Like, let me give you one of my favorites actually is around gratitude, which is when you are doing something that doesn't require your brain, like washing your hands or brushing your teeth, um, can you at the same time remember three things you are grateful for? So it's no extra time. It's called habit stacking. And it's incredibly powerful and effective. It literally carves new neural pathways in the brain to counteract the pathways of uh, negativity, fear, anxiety, which of course are particularly intense during a time like this. Well, it, it, as you said, the, this crisis was a wake-up call for all of us. And th 